like saying, give me a pillow, I'm ready for a nap, that's it. And you know what, y'all look about the same. Yeah? Yeah. Well, we're glad that you actually came out today. Um, we're having some technical difficulties at the moment, but uh, we are glad you're here. Looking mighty dapper there, uh, Mr. Santee. You are. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hallelujah. Well, who came to the house of the Lord to worship? Amen. The Lord of the Lords, the King of Kings, the Almighty God. Amen. Well, why don't we stand and let's just pray. Father God, we just praise you. We thank you. We glorify you, Almighty God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are in control of all things. We thank you, Father, that as we submit to you and walk in faith, Father, that you will rain down upon us, Lord, the blessings from heaven. So, Lord, we thank you for opening up those windows now, Lord, and just showering us with the healing. Father, showering with us the hope, Lord, the peace. Father God, the presence of your spirit, Lord. Come and commune with us today yes. through worship and the word, Lord. Because, Lord, we are hungry for you. We know that you are the resurrection God, and we look to you to resurrect. And, Lord, we thank you. And they all said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If he did it once, he'll do it again. Amen.
thank you, Lord, that you are the same today as you were yesterday, and that you will remain forever. You never change. You're always the same. When you did it then, you'll do it now for us. Move those mountains. We need you to move, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, 
Seriously, let's give it over to God. Let's give him all the praise. You know, it says in the Bible that high praise is bind the king of this world. And we want to bind him and we want to loose the Holy Spirit in this house. Because you know what? I'm expecting healings today. I'm expecting healings today. I'm expecting healings today. Because our God is a resurrecting God. Let's give him all the praise. Let's give him all the honor. Oh, Lord, we praise you and we give you glory and we thank you and we say, Great are you, Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I sense the Lord saying that he wants to knit together. And that's the words I got. Knit together some bones today. He wants to knit them together. He wants to put them back better than they were before. Oh, he is the creator, yes? He is the creator. He created our bodies. He knows every little cell, every vertebrae, every tendon, ligament, and sinew, and, and layer of skin, everything that's there within us, he knows because he created. And he wants to knit together. He wants to also knit together those hearts that have been broken. I don't know what the heartbreak was, but I know he wants to knit it back together. He wants you to lay it, whatever it was that broke your heart, he wants you to lay it at the altar today. And as we sing, all who are thirsty, if you're thirsty for his touch and his healing, will you let him know by coming up or just giving it? See, this, this is a burial, this, the altar, what it is to me sometimes, it's a burial ground. You come up and you offload what it is. You offload it onto the back of the one who can carry it. Because we weren't created to carry the pain. We weren't created to carry the disappointment. We weren't created to carry the weight of our own sin of judgment. It's time to get rid of it, church. Yes. It's time. Your heart 
So it's kind of cool in that regard. I, I don't like the cough. Anybody else got the cough? I'm the only one? Okay. Uh, oh, Pastor Leanne's got it. Yeah, and that's why she sucks on stuff. Oh, by the way, Pastor Dorothea, Pastor Leanne just stole your chair. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, she's looking like she's going to get out and go. I owe you one. Hallelujah. Hi. My, my girlfriend's coming up here to see you. Oh, praise the Lord. I kind of like that girl. Just, uh, and you know, we're celebrating 50 years this year, right? Yeah. And we have been talking about um, uh, invitations. We're going to be sending out invitations here pretty soon. We haven't chosen them yet, but they're coming. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll probably save the postage and postage and just pass them out here uh, at church one day. You know, but you're all invited. Just know that right now you're all invited. It's probably going to be the last uh, at, at the very end of July. Our anniversary actually is August 27th. Um, uh, we. Um, we actually had our first date on August 28th of 1971, and we got married on August 27th of 1972. So we've been together, actually, 51 years you know, in that regard. But married 50, that's the, that's the norm thing. Okay, so listen, I want to get right into the Word this morning. Uh, put up uh, Proverbs 28.1. This one uh, should be familiar to you. Um, you were introduced to this one last week. If you've never read this one before, you were introduced to this last week with Pastor Eric's sermon. Uh, and it says, the wicked, the wicked flee. They run away when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. And I agree with Pastor Eric. I mean, that's, that's why we don't go jogging. You know, I mean, it's a it's a telltale sign, right? Yeah, it's just it's just telltale sign uh, that uh, if you're you're running and nobody's pursuing you, my gracious, why why does anybody do that? <laughs> Hallelujah! But listen, I want you to understand here the wicked. The word wicked. Uh, the word wicked. You know, when we think of wicked people, we think of Hitler or Putin right now, uh, perhaps, uh, or your favorite corrupt politician, somebody like that. Um, and even though they are wicked, this, this particular wicked really doesn't apply all that much to them. Wicked here uh, applies to somebody who has no anchor. Somebody who has no foundation. Somebody who is of a lousy character. Lousy character qualities. Okay? Uh, those are wicked people too. That should shed some light on, on uh, who you maybe have seen or... Um, some of us you know, ran around with people like that 100 years ago before we got saved. Um, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're just people who have nothing. Some society would sometimes call them shiftless or double-minded, uh, at least without any good character qualities. <clears throat> so this is contrasted with the righteous who are bold as a lion. But to add to this a little bit, the word that bears out, they may be learning how to become bold as the lion. So that's going to be the point that I want to work out uh, today. You're going to see that it bears out in, in the Gospels especially. But uh, we're going to start out with uh, 1 John 2.28, I think. Is that next, that's the next one I got up there? Don't the boys do a great job? Yeah. I just had them a list this morning, and they put them all in the computer, and, and away they go. So I'm going to pick up where Pastor Eric left off last week, or at least add a little bit to the to insight from the Word today, why we may not be bold as a lion, and, and then ask a question, well, what makes one bold as a lion, and what keeps us from that boldness that can be ours in Christ Jesus? Amen? So in 1 John 2, 28 says, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, that we may have, say the word with me, confidence, and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Now that 
that particular passage, or that particular verse, has to do with when we stand before the Lord. Okay? But the word confidence is there, and, and he says, uh, now little children, abide in him. So when he appears, we may have confidence. Now the word confidence and faith are almost interchangeable, okay? You're going to see that here in a minute. Confidence and faith are like identical twin sisters, okay? They're two individuals, however, you can't tell them apart. That's, that's kind of the issue there, okay? And, and in some cases, not all cases, but in some cases they're interchangeable uh, in, in the Word of God. <clears throat> So we have that really terrific word that we're going to be looking at here today. There, there's other verses in 1 John as well that talk about this. <coughs> that, that idea of confidence. All right? That's your key word today, confidence. It was in the very first song that we sang today. Yes? yes. We have this confidence in Him. <coughs> Amen? What was the reasoning behind that? He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen? Amen? That is our confidence. That is our faith. That we trust in the Lord because He never changes. He never becomes like humanity. Never becomes like us who fail each other miserably oftentimes. Okay? We fail all the time. And we're going to see that today. Okay? Turn with me to, uh, well, if you, have your, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn them on, like my pastor suggests. Turn them on to 2 Samuel 24.10, okay? 2 Samuel 24.10. This is an interesting passage, and it's, it just makes so clear the point that I want to make today. It says that David's heart condemned him after he had numbered the people. And so David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I've done. But now I pray, O Lord, take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. Okay, so the key words here are condemned. His heart condemned him because he had sinned. Now, I'm going to explain this a little bit. Uh, so this particular passage has to do with when David did a census. Now we do census in this country every 10 years, yeah? So there's nothing particularly wrong with a census unless the Lord tells you not to, okay? And, and this is one of those cases where the Lord had explained to uh, King David that don't do it, just don't do a census. And, uh, and for a lot of years he didn't, okay? And there's good reasoning behind that. All right, so if you uh, looked at the, the life of King David, you would understand that very often he had to send out his army to war. Uh, and never having taken a census, he always trusted the Lord. You see that? Okay, so he trusted the Lord for that army that he was going to send out. That the Lord, I mean, he always went to the Lord and said, God, should I send him up to, to fight against the Philistines or whoever it was? Yeah, and the Lord would either say, yeah or nay. Or he would say, yeah, do this or do that, you know. And so David always just obeyed and he sent the armies out. Well, then he started to lose his faith in the Lord, he started to mistrust the Lord. And he wanted to know, hmm, this is, uh, this is December, I think, um, January. We always send the armies out in about April. Yeah, we always send them out in the spring of the year to fight. How many do I have to send out this year? And so he did a quick census of of his army, and the Lord said, mm -mm. now you've sinned, okay? Now you have lost your trust in me, okay? And because of that sin, then the Lord judged him seriously, and if you wanted to read on for the rest of that chapter, it, it's very, very serious, okay? Um, so here he, it just makes it clear that when he sinned, his heart condemned him. And that's the point that I want to make. David also wrote in Psalm 3110. I don't think I have that one in there, but it says, my strength fails me because of my iniquity. How many of you know when you sin, something goes wrong? You lose your power. You lose everything, basically. Okay? 
So that's what's going on here. You see, sin and condemnation are always consequential. Always. Always. There is no, there is no the other side of thing with sin. When you sin, you are condemned. And when you are condemned, you lose your power. Condemnation always strips us of our confidence. Yeah, I think most of you already didn't know that. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's elementary. It's just really elementary for who we are in Christ. And still we sin. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Well, we sin in our humanity. So, in Hebrews 11, 6, it says this. And without confidence, it's impossible to please God. Okay. You, your Bible probably says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And that's truth. Uh, in, in that particular place, it's, they're actually interchangeable. Yeah, confidence and faith are so knit together. It's, it's so interesting. Without confidence, it's, it's just impossible to please God. All right. So, so let's take a look at the opposite of David's sin in in Psalm chapter 7, verses 1 through 5, this is then David's confidence, all right? <clears throat> so, Lord my God, in you I put my trust. Save me from all those who persecute me and deliver me, lest they tear me like a lion, rending me in pieces while there's none to deliver. Oh, Lord my God, if I've done this, if there is iniquity in my hands, if I have repaid evil to him who was at peace with me, or have had plundered my enemy without cause, let the enemy pursue me and overtake me. Yes, let him trample my life to the earth and lay my honor in the dust. Selah. Now, let's let's put that in today's vernacular in in a, in a in today's illustration. So. If I take the place of David here, and, and, and if, I, if I have said anything about Kenny, by the way, Kenny, since you, you sit up in the front here, you're the one that always gets picked on, okay? Praise him. You, you just know that, okay? So we're picking on Kenny today. So if I have said anything about Kenny, guys, I'll go out in, in, in the street in 1792, and I'll stand there, and if a truck runs over me, then... Yes, I have said something bad about Kenny, but if they all go around me, then I am without sin. Now, that's the confidence that I have. That's the confidence that David had before the Lord. Now, in this passage, he's not saying that he is sinless, okay? But in this passage, there is a particular accusation being made against him, okay? And so he, he treats this like he ought to, and like you ought to. When the enemy comes in like a flood and accuses you of all kinds of things, you can say, if I, if I did that, I'm just gonna lay out in 1792 and let the truck run over me. But if not, I'm free in front of the Lord, okay? So David has that kind of confidence in front of the Lord. Few of us ever talk like that. I mean, few, I have never prayed anything like that. Lord, if I am without guilt here, you just, I mean, yeah. if I'm guilty, slay me, you know, deal with it. So anyway, that's, that's kind of the illustration there that, that uh, we need to be able to see, okay? Now, I sincerely wish that I had that kind of confidence all the time. The problem is that I sin. You sin. He, she, or it sin. Yeah, we all sin. We all have this problem in our flesh. Amen. Okay? Now, let's go back to 1 John and take a look at some of the other verses here in 1 John. Let's look at 1 John 5, verses 14 and 15. <clears throat> now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will well, he hears us 
And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. So you can see in this particular passage that confidence affects all of our prayers. Go, and if one has unresolved sin in their life, you got to know confidence is really low, and you probably already know, uh, you have an inkling that your prayers are probably not going to be answered. Okay? It's a, it's a pretty hefty issue. Okay? So, now let's look at 1 John 3, 21-22. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. Whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do these things that are pleasing in his sight. So here you have another one. If our hearts does not condemn us, that's a very telling phrase, isn't it? So this is something that we should be able to learn, okay? Prayer and answers to prayer seem to be very conditional. Yeah? yeah? So where we're at in life. Now, again, like I say, this is this is just this is just all elementary, but but wait. God does not want us in this kind of predicament. And that's why he sent Jesus. Amen? He sent his only son that we could be completely free of condemnation. Yes? Amen. Romans 8, 1 says, and there is therefore now no Ooh, is that a good one? That's, I'm amazed how many you, you quoted that. That's great. That is really, really great. So there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So as a matter of fact, he gave us not only a Savior who takes away all of our sin, God also gives us a means by which we can be free of current sin Amen. and condemnation. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's have a brief review here, okay? Now these aren't in the... the I don't think I put them in, in the notes... Uh, Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So, nobody is without sin, yes? We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And in Romans 6.23, we understand that all are then condemned. Right? But also in Romans 6.23, we know we have a gift. That is, eternal life. Through Jesus. Through Jesus. So why do we need 1 John 1.9? So the previous verses here in 1 John, chapter 1, would indicate that it is simply to ensure a perfect relationship between us and God, but also between me's and you's. <laughs> now, think about that one for a minute. When we sin, it does not just affect the relationship between us and God, it affects the relationship between each of us and each of you. That's true. Yeah. Now, that's one you probably need to study out in the Word, because I'm telling you, that's one that's rarely ever preached in any churches. How sin affects life in the body. It's a big deal. Okay? 1 John chapter 1 bears that out. Uh, before he gets to 1 John 1, 9, okay? If we confess our sin. You see, he's talking about our sin and how it works in us all the way around. And the effects of that thing are that it destroys relationships vertically and horizontally, okay? But it leaves us with condemnation that must be dealt with. Okay, so let's just say that God wanted to cover every angle so we would never suffer broken relationships, and that's the real consequence of sin. That's true. 
Yeah. Yes, death is how it's described, but that death comes in form of broken relationships in so many ways. Do you know divorce is death? Yeah. You ever heard that one before? Yeah. yeah. Divorce is death. Okay? So why do we have 1 John 1, 9? And why does this seem so easy? Isn't that easy? Why is this so easy and who is this for? It looks for everyone. Have you ever looked at this as being one of the easiest verses in the Bible? Huh? No? 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 Can I tell you, this is the easiest verse in the entire Bible. It really is. Okay, think about this. Think about this. I'm going to take a little side road here. This is around so that no one has to suffer broken relationships. Broken relationship with God or broken relationship with each other. Okay? It's the easiest verse in the Bible. It's the easiest plan that we could ever imagine. I mean, you can't think of something this easy. I'm telling you, our flesh wants to do something different. Okay? I want to work off some penitence here. You know, I, I want to do something with, so that the Lord will be okay with me. Okay? I, I, I want to get down on my knees until my knees are bloody. You know, to make up for junk that I did in my life. Okay? That's the flesh's way of doing things. We're all like that. We're all like that. That's built into our humanity. We feel like we've got to work for something. Yeah. At the very least, we have to work for our salvation. And so many religions of the world are based on that alone. Yeah. But God makes it so easy. So very easy. He said, just confess your sins and I'll do this. I will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I forgive you. I cleanse you. It's, is it really that simple? Yes, it is. It is that simple. And if you thought otherwise, I want you to change your attitude this morning toward that one verse because I run to this. I run to this verse. I run to this and use this as I already had to do again this week. Made a bad boo-boo and had to run to that. And I'm so glad it's there. I'm so glad it's that easy. And I, I didn't have to wear a crown of thorns. I didn't have to get one of those things to beat myself with. And, you know, I, I didn't have to crawl from, from here to the having a library or something. I, I go to that verse. And it's so easy. Okay? So let's close out this, this portion. Because I have two parts to this, this message today. I want to look at Ephesians 11, or Ephesians 11. If you've got that in your Bible, I want to see the Bible. <laughs> Ephesians 3, 11 and 12. Okay. <laughs> Ephesians 3, 11 and 12 says, okay, let me preface this. First John 1, 9 is there, and it's so easy according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have Oh, no wonderful. First John 1, 9 is there so that we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in Him. How glorious is that? Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. 
First John 1 9 is just fabulous in light of the rest of God's plan. Amen? Look at Philippians 3.3. 3. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have what? No confidence in the flesh. And we don't have to. We don't have to have any confidence in the flesh. We can put away any confidence in the flesh. I know this goes on to, in, in the Word to talk about. I bet Paul wrote this for a lot of good reasons. But, but take it for face value. We have no confidence in the flesh because we don't need any confidence in the flesh when we have confidence in Him. When we have confidence in the very Word of God. When we have confidence that, that He not only forgives us, but cleanses us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah 30, verse 15. says, For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Yeah, it goes on to say, but you wouldn't have any of that. If you rejected the Word of God, you wouldn't have any of that. But we don't reject the Word of God. We know in quietness and confidence is strength. Amen. It's power. It's power. Okay. It's, it's power. The power of God. And we need that power. We need that confidence. We need that faith. We need that power of God. And he wants us to have that power. Amen. Amen. Okay. Part two. We're going to look at another facet of faith or confidence or should we say lack of confidence in Matthew 8, uh, verse 23 through 27. This is about Jesus when he got in the boat and his disciples followed him. Okay. Suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. And why shouldn't he be? He was tired. And then his disciples came to him and he woke him saying, Lord, <laughs> save us. We're perishing. But he said to them, why are you fearful? Why are you fearful? Why? Why are you fearful? Oh, you of little faith. I want to focus on the word uh, little faith there. Then he arose, he rebuked the winds and the sea and there was a great calm. Okay, so now this is a great story. And, and experience has something to do with it, okay? And I want to discount the idea of experience by the disciples in the boat with Jesus. Apparently, they had never experienced such a bad storm where they really feared for their lives. And I know these are fishermen. They've been out on that lake before. They've probably been out there in storms, okay? But they cried out to Jesus to save them. Now, here's the point that we need to look at and, and, and really ponder, Okay? They knew Jesus could do something. Okay? But they didn't think they could. Hello? Right. You see that? You see that? Nobody cries out to the Lord if they're going to do something on their own. And do it with confidence. Just thought I'd throw that in there. But you see that. They, they, they had no confidence in themselves... But they had confidence in Christ. So they had some faith. That's why Jesus said, oh, you have little faith, okay? So it's not that they had no faith, but they had a little faith. And faith can and must grow, okay? And we must be assertive in that issue within the kingdom of God. We must be assertive. But little faith, here's the problem. That was very good. We got it before the bomb went off. <laughs> those, boys, the boys, those boys are fast. They are good and they are fast. Okay. Here's the problem, though. When you have little faith, and this should be our, an impetus for us to do something better than where we're at, okay? When you have little faith, it still allows for a lot of fear. Can you see that? Little faith allows for fear. 
okay? Or anything else, okay? So, note this. Here, here's a note. You can write this down if you want. I, I, I probably should have put it up on the board so you could took your picture of it, whatever. Wherever faith or confidence does not exist, the vacuum thereof will be filled with something from your enemy. Okay? Faith must not remain at status quo, but again, we must be assertive in our faith to let it grow or make it grow. Okay? Some other scriptures, Matthew 6.30 says this, Now if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is here and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you of you little faith? Okay, so again here, Jesus is talking about their <coughs> little faith. Now apparently, apparently there had been some discussion amongst the disciples about where they are at. Like, what are we going to eat today? And where are we going to sleep tonight? And, uh, and oh my, what's, what's going on? Whew. They're just worried about all kinds of things. How's our bills going to get paid? And how's our kids' teeth going to get fixed? You know, Jesus is talking about their little faith. Okay? Matthew 14, 31. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and he caught him and said to him, Oh, you of... Why did you doubt? So here's the story of Peter. And Peter catches the brunt of this little faith issue. Alright? It's all on Peter today. And yeah, he, he, he's the one who... Cries out to Jesus, Jesus come across the water walking on the waves and said, Hey, can I do that? And Jesus said, Yeah, just get out of the boat and come. And so he gets out of the boat and away he goes. And then he starts to fall. And you this this story's been preached over and over and over again. Okay? You've all heard this uh, a, a number of times, okay? Peter's the brunt of the little faith issue here. And much has been preached about that particular incident. Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and began to fall. Yeah, we've all heard that one. Perhaps he did not want a repeat of the first time the storm hit in the middle of the ocean, or the middle of the lake, okay? Of course, the other thing is that Peter uh, could be considered something of a show-off by his exuberance to leave the boat and to walk on the water. I mean, he's the only one that suggested that, right? And all of those issues, all those things may be valid points of the story, but the one thing is sure, there is a fine line between confidence and the lack thereof. One's fall can be very quick, but it can also be catastrophic. So this issue of little faith is not something to be toyed with, okay? This is what, the third time that, that we have spoken of little faith? Yes. Okay, it goes on from here. All right? Matthew 16, 8. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, O you of little faith, why do you reason among yourselves because you have not brought any bed? Well, now, by now you have seen the pattern in how Jesus was training his disciples. Not only did he teach and challenge those he chose. And I use that word, he chose. Did he choose you? Yes, he did. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. If you haven't figured out yet that you're chosen of the Lord, today's the day. Yes. Today's the day to get that figured out. Okay? And anybody here can help you with that. All right? If you're chosen of the Lord, he's going to train you. He's going to teach you. Okay? Yes. Just like he did his disciples. Not only did he teach and challenge those he chose to work with, he also was able to chide them with considerable expectation. Okay? That's very purposely said as well. Jesus expects you to grow. There is nothing in the Word of God that says you should be remain where you're out, where you're at. That's right. Where you're out? I don't know where that came from. Um, 
sometimes my brain wouldn't work to get ahead of the words. Um, we're never allowed to remain with the status quo. When you bought into this thing, you bought into growth. Yes. Okay, you are you bought into something wonderful. You you are not allowed to stay, remain with status quo. You're going to grow. Because you're not growing, you're going backwards. There is no standing still in the kingdom of God. If you're not going forward, you're going backward. That's how it works. Alright, so the other gospel writers demonstrate that same challenging dialogue as Matthew did. And what we know from this is that faith or confidence must not be hindered by unresolved sin, but must be allowed to grow and develop by various means and experiences. Okay? Yes. Now, let me stop there for a minute. Some of you have been, uh, have heard Barb's story, for instance, okay? We were both born again in Logan, Utah, a place rife with Mormonism, okay? It's big time Mormons there, okay? Yeah, there's, there's a Mormon church on every corner. Christian churches are few and far between. Uh, we found a little Southern Baptist church, and Barb was born again there, and uh, a couple years later, that, that little Southern Baptist church became Pentecostal. Um, well, back then we called it charismatic. Not there's an awful lot of difference there either, okay? Semantics, basically. But there was a lot of hope preached to us at that time. A lot of hope. And we began to understand that God, yes, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He healed back then, and He would heal again. Okay? Hence, we sang the song. Amen. He'll do it again? Yes. Yeah, he'll do it again. He'll do it again and again and again Amen. and again and again and again. Amen. Okay, we can keep it going. But Barb got the boldness to go be prayed for because at that time she had multiple sclerosis. Not a fun disease to have, you know, uh, and it was beginning to cripple. And there was times when uh, she had symptoms and her entire left side would go dead. Okay? She couldn't lift her arm. She couldn't move her leg. Uh, it was just one of those things that didn't work. And before I was born again, I used to put her over, put her left arm over my shoulder. She might qualify. I, sometimes I get details messed up. So if you want the whole story, talk to Barb about it. <laughs> Anyway, to make a long story short, I mean, we used to walk down the road and, and, and I, I would speak to her leg in sometimes foul language and say, work, just work, you know, and I was determined in my flesh to make that thing go away and get those legs working again, get that arm working again. Well, to make a long story short, God healed her of multiple sclerosis. Yeah, yeah, that's experience, okay? That's the kind of experience that I'm talking about here. When you see something happen, you latch on to it, and you never let it go. Because we know now that God will heal multiple sclerosis. Yes. Amen. Yeah, I have faith for that in anyone that I talk to about MS. Yeah, we don't let this thing go away. We hang on to that one, all right? So I was talking to uh, young Eric here this morning because uh, he's got a little headache going, or a little yeah, crud going on in his head this morning. Not in his brain, it's just in his sinuses. <laughs> he's, the brain's fogging the Yeah, a little brain fog. Yeah, okay. Uh, so anyway, I had my own experience. Not only was I totally delivered from smoking. I mean, I was a three-pack a dayer. God delivered me from smoking, so I know he does that too. Yes. That's good experience. Yes. Yeah, that was April 28, 1980. That's 
two years ago, almost. Hallelujah. But I went to church one Sunday morning, and I, I was feeling important, I suppose, at church, because I was the uh, head deacon, I was Sunday school superintendent, and I, I had to be there, basically. You know, you, you know when, when you have jobs to do at church, you know, basically, you, you have to be there. But I went there that morning, and I had the worst cold in my head that I had ever had. I was so stuffed up, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't anything. I just couldn't even function, really. Should have stayed home. Uh, but I went anyway. And, and uh, so immediately upon arrival at the church, I had the pastor pray for me. Now, I was in the back, one of the back rooms, and, and I just said, Lord, I need help, and I need it now. And Pastor um, Dick Trimmer was his name. Laid hands on me and prayed, and nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened. And I sat through the service. I sat through that sermon that morning, and, and we were about two rows back. And it was about where Kenny and Heather are sitting. And uh, I suffered through that service. And I thought, this guy's never going to get done preaching. You know, all I could think was, Lord, just, Lord, oh, oh, Lord, oh, I am so bad. I am just so, so very bad. And would he just get done? You know, just, Lord, get him done. You know, so I can go home and go to bed. Well, he got done, uh, as all preachers do. And uh, something in me just said, get up and go get prayed for again. Uh, and so I did. I jumped up out of that chair and I went right up. I said, Dick, Pastor Dick, I, you just got to pray for me again. And uh, he, he just began to pray and started to lift his hand up like that. And I just went, <coughs> right on the, uh, we, we had, you know, cement floor and really thin carpet, but exactly the same thing that's over in the chapel there, or the uh, fellowship hall. I hit that cement like a ton of bricks and bounced. And about five minutes later, I came up going, oh, I can breathe again. I was completely healed. Yeah, I went home a brand new man that day. Uh, again, you know, good experience. Amen. Do I know that God heals terrible, nasty colds? Yes. yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. We watched a guy uh, also who was deaf. Um, and Pastor Trimmer, and, and the guy was sitting right back where Matt is sitting right now. And Dick Trimmer was preaching away, and uh, we got to pray for this guy. And so Pastor began to pray for, his name was Mel Henson. And Pastor began to pray for him, and his hearing was completely restored right there. Yeah. And, and to prove it, uh, and we knew he was deaf. I mean, everybody knew that he was pretty deaf. Uh, if you got right up to his ear and screamed in his ear, yeah, he could hear you. Uh, so Pastor actually turned around and began to talk to him. Mel, can you hear me? Mel, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, and he walked up. Mel, can you still hear me? Yeah, and he lowered his voice, and we, we knew that he was completely healed. Well, that's good experience, yes? Yeah. Okay. Now, I, I say all that because we don't understand that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Okay. He healed, and we watched it, and we experienced it, and we know that he'll do it again. Amen? He'll do it again and again and again and again. Amen. As a matter of fact, he'll do all kinds of healings. He did those kinds of things in the Word of God. Everything that he did in there is to you experience. Okay? Take them as such. I want that kind of experience in my life. That's what makes my faith grow. That's what gives me confidence. Amen. In, in what he will do. Now, having said all that this morning, we have some issues here. All right? Um, I've, uh, you know, most of the men know that uh, uh, Mark Andrews, who is not here this morning, obviously, uh, typically sits right over there, uh, has a very bad back and was suffering a lot of pain, went to a doctor, and uh, apparently they did a lot of cutting on him, uh, and they, if I remember right, he had uh, a lot of bone spurs taken off. 
of his vertebrae. Uh, if I'm wrong on that, Mark, correct me. Uh, right. And most of the men have been praying for him, and he's he had that uh, posted on, on the men's website. That's why we couldn't have a men's meeting yesterday. That's why he wasn't here this morning in place of Miss Peggy uh, teaching that Sunday school class. So he is home. Um, I'm guessing he's watching online. And uh, he has a very bad back and is extremely a lot of pain. So we're going to pray for him this morning. But we're not going to just pray for him. Okay? Um, Pastor Leanne has a bad back. And it needs help. Pastor Dorothea has a bad back. And she goes frequently to get stretched out Jesus. and get that thing dealt with. Bobby is not here this morning because his back is causing him so much trouble he can hardly walk. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I have a bad back. Mm. Now, those are just a few. Oh, yeah. Marcia's going. <laughs> to Eric. Eric has a bad back. Art has a bad back. Art, can you, would you come up here? Would, can I get you to just come up here and sit down right here? You know? We're going to pray over you. And you're going to stand in for all these people that have bad backs. Including yours. Amen? I think they call that proxy or <laughs> something like that. Is that is that the right word, Eric? You're smarter than me. Uh, I guess so. It sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, you know, Art's going to be a proxy for all of us that have bad back. Anybody else that we uh, haven't mentioned? Jerry has a bad back. Greg has a bad back. Lori. Lori. Your Lori. Your sister Lori. That would be the one. John. Uh, John. Who ought to be there right there? Yeah. Matt. Oh my God. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. We all kind of earned that, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we do construction. Yeah, that's what happens to most of us. We just... Uh... Lay saw. Oh, yeah, we didn't get this from laying saw. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I want us to know and understand here today oh, that... Jesus, that God is still a healer. Yes, he is. Yeah. I mean, I love doctors. We have doctors. We go to doctors all the time. All the time we go to doctors. But here's what I know about doctors. Not one of them is a healer. Amen. Like the one we know. Amen. 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 Can they help a lot? Yes, they can. Are they gifted and sent by God? Yes, they are. I, I, I would not disparage doctors in any way, shape, or form. But most of them know that they are in a practice and they have gifts and they have talents. They're developed, but they're still practicing and there's only one healer. Lots of them know that there's only one healer. But like uh, Advent Health says, uh, well, I probably have not go there because it says something to the effect of eh, kind of adding to the life of Christ. Something like, I don't know. I probably blew that one pretty bad. Uh, but it's on every computer uh, that uh, Advent Health has. My daughter has one, and, and that's listed across her computer, which is turned on all the time. And those scripture verses are on there. You work for Advent Health, you have a computer that, that has scripture verses on it. And that's what Advent Health is all about. Amen? Amen. Uh, hallelujah. So we're going to take a minute, and here's what I, I need from all of you guys. Okay, uh, I, I, I just need you to come and as many as you can, uh, get close to art, lay hands on art if you can, but expect, let's expect God to heal. Okay, if we have this kind of experience, and we've already invited the Holy Spirit to be here this morning and do things that he's never done before here. But we want to lay hands on Art because he's just standing in for all of us, for Mark and for Bobby especially, and for all the rest of us that are still functional but need help. Oh, Lord. Leanne, come on. Front here. 
just come around the front. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, that's a prayer. 
us of all healing, Lord. Our sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. And we are made whole in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Lord, be glorified here this morning in every way. Hallelujah. In everything, Lord. In every, every person that's here, every word, every deed, everything that's done. In every healing, Lord. In Mark and in Bobby and in Art and Pastor Leanne and me and Pastor Dorothea and Lori and Aaron uh, and Jerry and if I missed anybody, Lord, you got their name written in glory. Our names are written in glory. Hallelujah. Amen. You got them all, Lord. You got them all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 from birth. And, and that scoliosis is the greater part of her problems with what well, you see that knot she's got on her hand? Yes. That's because of the scoliosis. That's because her left leg doesn't work right. Okay, so it's one thing after another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We've got faith for this. We got faith for this, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we know that if you you uh, touched and healed a blind man who was blind from birth. <coughs> Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, Lord. We just ask you to straighten up that back. Make it perfectly straight to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just cause her, Lord, to regain the height that she's lost. Be straightened completely out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen, Lord. We expect it. We expect it from you, oh Lord. We are not for selfish, but Lord, you said we could. You said, Lord, we could be healed in Jesus' name. You said, Lord, we could use your name. So we use it liberally here. For this, our sister, in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Anything else we need to work on while we're all right here? Amen. Uh, we got this thing going. Let's. Uh, you need help? Let's. let Arthritis. Arthritis. Well, I have a certain finger that has that really bad, and I won't show it. <laughs> but you can probably guess which one it is. Yeah. Especially the it's not the little one either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Dale with real strong handshakes. <laughs> <laughs> this finger and one over here. Jesus. Hallelujah. Arthritis in all of us is a big, big problem, Lord. Hallelujah. We need your healing touch, Lord. We need deliverance from this foul thing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we need deliverance from this foul things of the enemy, Lord, that play upon our bodies, Lord, and take us down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Terrible headache. Right here, right in your ears. I'm going to put my finger on that because it's going to go away in Jesus' name. Go ahead, man. You're too short to touch it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, man. We man. Be gone. Be gone. Be gone, old foul thing. Amen. Out. Out, old foul thing. Out. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Gracious Lord, gracious Lord. Healing and deliverance in Jesus' name. 
Amen. There it goes. There it goes. Jesus goes, Lord, you're the giver of good gifts. Good gifts. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless your name, Lord. Oh, right here. Two of them right here. Two of them. You. You. Jesus. Amen. Okay. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Diabetes as well. And 
she has pain in her whole side of her face. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, you're the healer. Lord Jesus, you're the healer. Oh, and we cry, we pray out to you, oh, Lord Jesus, you're the healer. Hallelujah, Lord, bring healing to all of us, Lord, we pray. Oh, bring healing to the body of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. While they're working on that issue there, Lord, I, I just want to share with you what, what Eric just shared with me. It reminded me that we, as disciples, and we are disciples, amen? Amen. We are commanded. We're not asked politely. We're commanded to heal the sick. And we're commanded to declare that the kingdom of God is near. Amen. We're commanded to understand that our sins are forgiven. That healing and wholeness is ours in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything. It's all ours. It's all ours in Christ Jesus. Amen. Every spiritual blessing is ours in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God is here. Jesus, these are working hands. Lord Jesus, these are working hands. 
Oh, Lord Jesus, these are, work, these are hands that work for you, Lord Jesus. Not because he has to, but Lord, because he gets to and he wants to for you, Lord. These are hands that love you. These are hands that demonstrate that love for you, Lord Jesus, day in and day out. Nor they demonstrate love um, for his family as well in that regard. Uh, Lord Jesus, the love of God in this man is incredible. Lord, heal his hands because you love his return. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we just command healing and wholeness to come in with his hands completely about Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Healing and wholeness be his. Healing and wholeness come in his hands. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my. Oh, my. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, Lord. Lord, we're asking that, that, uh, that you not, not only just heal these hands, but, Lord, make these hands hands of healing. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, as he sees people, as he sees other people, Lord, that yeah. need healing, Lord, would you just lay upon this man the gift of healing, the gifts of healing. Amen. I say, Lord, use this man to heal others, Lord, as you heal him. Lord, just cause that healing power of God to be his whenever, Lord, he prays over other people, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, not that he has to work. She has to work for that. That's a gift. Gifts of healing are gifts for us. Hallelujah. Let those gifts flow through these hands, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 For healing is yours, said the Lord. Healing is yours, said the Lord. Healing is yours, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. How about you, that's you,
<laughs> Thank you so much, Pastor Dale, for such an amazing word and an amazing time. So, um, yes, we have a few announcements. Can you please show our announcements? Okay, so first and foremost, um, you all are amazing, and I love our church, and I love the way that our church serves. Um, so next weekend, we have the Florida Pastors Connection, um, and we, initially when we were planning, um, we had a few volunteers, and we were going to be good, because um, they were anticipating about 60 people, um, and yesterday we had a Zoom call, because that number has doubled. <laughs> we are expecting about 120 um, at this point, the numbers are being capped at 130, um, so we are in desperate, desperate need of volunteers. We need people here Friday night, next Friday, um, to help set up chairs. Right now we have 79 chairs, we counted them yesterday. We need to make room for 120 chairs in here, um, as well as next door, because we're also serving um, lunch. Um, we need help with people um, for parking because it's a lot of cars. We need a lot of help making sure that we can get all these cars somewhere in this vicinity. <laughs> um, we're also going to need help serving lunch. Um, we're going to need some help cleaning up at the end of the day. So if you are willing to be here, um, anytime, whether it's Friday night or Saturday, to help in any capacity. We will greatly, greatly appreciate your time, your service, um, and we will repay you with food. <laughs> we will repay you with food. So Friday night, we'll probably order pizza. Saturday, whatever, we're ordering some sort of box lunch, whether it's from Chick-fil-A, Jason's Deli, 2G, somewhere, somewhere. We haven't yet figured out where, but you will be part of that food as well. Um, so if you are willing, um, Wednesday, please be here Wednesday night for Bible study. Um, we're going to use a majority of the time to finalize all of our details for Friday and Saturday. Um, Pastor has talked about possibly ordering food that night. So again, you come to serve, we'll just feed you. We will just continue to feed you. And maybe then you'll continue to help us. <laughs> no, seriously, we do need help. We need a lot of help. Because um, then we also are going to need to possibly get chairs and tables from other churches. Um, so people with trucks and trailers, we need your help too. Okay, enough about that. Next. Oh, yes, Youth Sunday. So April 3rd, our worship team is going to get a break because our kids are going to run worship. And they're going to run the, the show on that Sunday, on April 3rd. So make sure your kiddos are here. Um, I think Miss Samantha is the one actually in charge of the kids' worship. Um, and then I think Alex Snap is the one who is going to be bringing the word. So join us for Youth Sunday on April 3rd. Next. Yes, the next one. Um, I kind of feel weird announcing this one because my children are the ones benefiting. But... My kids are going out of state. They are going to Alabama in July. We are shipping them out. Um, <laughs> um, and I just, as, as a mama, can I tell you, I am so grateful to you all. Um, you guys have totally stepped up. We've got to make the next payment um, for their mission trip. Um, and because of your generosity and your giving, we were almost at the goal. And so I am so thankful and I'm so grateful to each and every one of you. If you are still needing their services, please come see me or see one of them. We will get you on the schedule, um, except next week. Because now with all this work that we have to do, they're not available next week. Because <laughs> they're going to be here working. So in the next weeks after the youth or the pastor's conference, we will be able to get you on the schedule where they can come. And they are more than willing. Um, they've moved some furniture with Pastor Leanne. They've done some yard work for Eric. They've helped watch Dominic for Rachel. So they, they are more than willing to work for you. You just tell them what you want them to do um, and when to be there. Next. Yes, we are still collecting um, supplies for Ukraine. So we need non-perishable food, medical supplies, bedding, stuffed animals, toys. Um, and we will get that to Mark and he will drop them off. Um, next. Okay.
Okay, last but not least, um, our giving, our tithes. We know that God is faithful when we are faithful. When we give our tithes and our offerings, you have several ways to give. You guys all know how to do it because you've been doing it for so well and so long. So, I think that's it. Is that it? That is it. So, Father God, I thank you for today. I thank you for our church. I thank you for Pastor Dale and for Pastor Eric and Dorothea and for those that are not here today due to um, medical issues, God, we just know and you that you are the healer, um, and we stand on your word today, God, um, that you have healed um, all of those that have come before your throne, God. We thank you, we praise you, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 You all are dismissed, have fun next door, feeding.